Welcome to the Irish NFL Show in association with our partner, Quinbet. We're in the middle of mini camps and optional team activities. And if you squint hard enough, it actually almost looks like football. But fear not, because even though we've yet to pass the longest day of the year, it's a long way from September, let's face it, we're still kicking off our annual off-season divisional and team previews with the NFC West. Brian, Shane and Kieran are all here to look at who's best placed now the dust has settled on free agency in the draft and to start looking ahead to the 2024-2025 season. We'll start from the top and move our way down based on the way things finished last year. The divisional and indeed conference champion San Francisco 49ers were the top dogs in the West last year. And Shane, it has run it back vibes about the 49ers. You know, there's not a huge amount of ch- uh, amount of chopping and change. And despite, you know, maybe rumors that they may lose Ayuk or Sam Samuel during the season, they've just signed Christian McCaffrey, of course, to a big contract. And 49ers have been so agonizingly close, no more so than last year, having lost in overtime, having led, again, the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Is there a sense here that uh, let's get the band back together for one more run and you think they can do it? Or how far short do you think they'll ultimately be? It's difficult to tell at this point because I think the real thing they would have to do is find some way to just mentally get over the fact that not only did they get as far as Super Bowl, they made a mess of it. Because the last two seasons have been golden opportunities for the San Francisco 49ers. Between, okay, fair enough, the NFC Championship game kind of fell apart in their hands. I mean, that was a quarterback situation which was... It should have been more terrible than it was where Brock Purdy ended up being a much better player than everybody expected. We go into the 2023 season, this, this is the best team of football. They had a bad patch in the middle of the season where they lost to the Browns and a couple of other se- teams as well before getting, their, before getting their momentum back up. But they played against the most beatable Chiefs team of this current dynasty in terms of the fact that all you had to do is find some way to shut down the offense and perform and they just didn't perform particularly in the first half of that Super Bowl you guys know better I guess you were you were there to watch it live I mean they they let Kansas City come back into it and then a complete failure of coaching meant that by the time they got into overtime the Chiefs knew what they were doing and the 49ers didn't so the real question mark here isn't really on personnel because I know there are some question marks around some elements of that offense which we know was just incredible at points last year. Like you mentioned, Christian McCaffrey has been signed. Brandon Ayuk didn't turn up to OTAs or uh, or training minicamp or whatever was going on this week. We're still not sure what way those negotiations are going. But to be fair, if Ayuk left, I think that's a bigger coup for whoever team gets him than it is a loss for the, for the 49ers. But for the 49ers' point of view, they're still living with uh, Brock Purdy's rookie contract. They have a bit of money to spend. They're on momentum. They're in a division which is very winnable. They're in the NFC side of the draw, which is very winnable. It's Super Bowl or bust. And that is the only thing that they need to be focused on. And the key here is whether the coaching, uh, Shanahan in particular, has gotten their act together in terms of being able to prepare and being able just to mentally compartmentalize and move on for 2023. And I'm still, as much as they are fantastic offensive minds and great game planners, I'm still not quite sure in that last bit. We have to remember, of course, is that Shanahan lost the Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers in 20, 2019, 2020. Uh, you know, this, is, this isn't new for, for, for them. That mental block is very difficult to get over. And if they face against the Chiefs again in the Super Bowl or play against a really strong uh, team in the NFC Championship game, which I expect they could be easy to go as far, that mentality is going to bite. They need to fix that as soon as possible. And we're not really going to get a sense of that until the preseason, until they get out on the field. You know, if they have the same crew there, fine. They can all live with the same shared experience and shared trauma. That's fine. They have the talent to do it. They need the mentality to do it. Brian, I'm going to say at the outset here before uh, before I bring you in that you know we are accused at times of being hard on the 49ers, and and I think to be fair, we're only hard because the highest standards apply to the best teams, like the talent that they have and the coaching that they have. And Shane kind of calls out there's a duality for. To, to Kyle Shanahan for me and that, you know, you saw at times in the Super Bowl, you know, he did the things that he's he's often criticized for not doing, took big chances and big moments. It's a trick play that ultimately leads, leads to what might have been the game-breaking touchdown. Um, it wasn't necessarily any particular failure on offense that let them down. In fact, it was kind of two special teams plays that let the thing go, although ultimately the defensive coordinator ends up being the one who pays the price uh, when the annual round of postseason uh, scapegoating uh, it reached its reached its conclusion. 
But man, they were so close. The, the thing for me and the big question, and Shane's kind of touching on it there, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on it, is if you stay still, you're going backwards in the NF in the NFL. I, you know, I don't know whether you think first of all that they're they're good enough to to keep control of the NFC West because the first order of business is you got to take care of your division if you have the sort of ambitions that they have. But secondly, are they equipped to go one further when everybody else is seeming to be advancing at pace? And as Shane mentioned, last year's Chiefs were the Chiefs winning a Super Bowl in a down year. They're absolutely locked in to try and win a third on the spin and do the thing that nobody's ever done before. Uh, the Ravens will be looking to take them down. We know it's a stacked AFC. The Lions aren't going anywhere in the NFC. And the, the, the question on, this, on these 49ers is, have they done enough not only to, to go one better, but to actually stay where they even are? I would imagine within the NFC, you would come August, come September, when we're making our selections, I think by and large, most of us will have the 49ers up there, certainly in the championship game. But it's, I, I feel kind of in a quandary where the 49ers are. And it's very strange to say that because I think any of us here with our own personal team would have these for place in terms of where the 49ers are and the, the level of expectation. But you touched on there, there's still some question marks around Kyle Shannon, in particular big games. And was they got over the line and made the sit well, this team has just been so close so many times and kind of gets to a stage where you feel it's going to come to an end and this win now kind of period is here and it's it's been here for quite some time for this team probably even a little bit longer than some other teams get the opportunity but, you know there's, there's the 2020 Super Bowl there's championship games missed opportunities as Shane has alluded to in the championship game the previous season with the quarterback scenario you know scenario of injuries but we haven't even touched on, and let's not get into the, the devil of the detail, Like the biggest question mark, the biggest storyline coming out of Super Bowl was how Kyle Shanahan approached the overtime and the new rules and the confusion around getting the ball and potentially getting the ball again. And he thought that was the best approach. Some of the people felt he should have went there with best foot forward and allowed his defense to get out there. And then there was a conversation with the defense being gassed at the end of the game. They've stacked up on defense again, Connor. And I couldn't remind you where they were 12 months ago. They feel like they can go toe to toe offensively with any team in the league and put up 30 to 40 points a game. They've kind of brought in some players. And I would say over the course of free agents, they've done some nice things in terms of some experienced players coming in. I think Floyd, Leonard Floyd, a guy who, who's won a Super Bowl with the Rams and went to the Bills, didn't materialize there. He's a, he's a nice signing. But I think the question marks more so maybe around the coaching as opposed to the players and whether the players can get over the line because some people feel that it's Kyle Shanahan who's leaving these Super Bowls behind, you know, by 10 points with seven minutes to go in Miami a couple of years, didn't get that one over the line, should have probably got the one over the line last February as we saw firsthand that it didn't materialise. Kieran, against that point, you might say that that was what, that's exactly the sort of thing people used to say about Andy Reid until he won one. And now he's the greatest genius, greatest offensive mind in the history of the NFL, blah, blah, blah. And Kyle Shannon maybe wouldn't be too far behind. But as Brian mentioned, Every gut-wrenching loss leaves its own scar tissue. You know, it's kind of an analogous to what we've seen in other sports. If you look at what, what's happened in Leinster Rugby even over the last couple of years, and it's not necessarily the case that it's steps of the stairs. Oh, you win, an, you win a championship game one year, you lose the Super Bowl, and then the next next time you win one. We know in the NFL, NFL stands for not for long, right? There's that, that old cliche, the, the window doesn't stay open too long. I mean, it does look like the core of this team is as good as anything you're going to see anywhere in the league right now. But that's changes with injuries and it changes with surges elsewhere and unexpected performances and all of that good stuff. Um, uh, and you, you never know when it's going to close. Right. And that's what I was going to start on the window. Um, you know, as, it's, as you said, NFL, not for long. There's a lot of teams who would have loved the window that the Niners have had the last few years, you know, from the, the Super Bowl in the 2020 season. And it's either they've lost the NFC championship and they've managed, to, you know, in 21 and 23, they've managed to keep, a lot of these guys around. There's a lot of different variables at play for the Niners this year. Um, they have a lot of their, you know, superstars that are going to be up for free agency soon. Um, Brandon IU, Chavarius Ward. Uh, we know they signed McCaffrey today. Uh, George Kittle, they got to pay. Debo, they got to figure out what they're going to do with Purdy. There's only so much money to go around. And there's only so much that Shanahan can do with all of that. Um, you have to think that this is you know, not last chance saloon for him. But if he doesn't produce this year, either it's going to be one of those cases, like you said, with Reed, maybe a, a parting of the ways is going to be the best thing for the Niners, whether it's whether it's Shanahan goes by himself and, and goes for a fresh start somewhere or, you know, the Niners make that change because they cannot 
you know, they can't get to the championship game again yeah. and lose, and they can't get to the Super Bowl game again it's a, and it's, lose. It's a good point, Kieran, as you say, because, you know, if you're going to use the Andy Reid paradigm, you know, Reid had to leave town in Philadelphia to go and win it somewhere else. You know, you can only come close so many times before yeah. people start to question whether you are actually the guy. Right. And I don't see a huge change uh, in, you know, they went 12 and 5 last year. You, nobody would be surprised if they went 12 and 5, 13 and 4 again this year. They start, their, their schedule to start off is as cupcake as you could get in the NFL. You know, they got the Jets, you know, they'll probably win that one, but they got the Vikings, Rams, Pats, Cardinals, Seahawks. They probably should be five and one, if not six and oh, by the start of the season. And that's when they start getting road. That's, you know, that's when, you know, late October hits in, IU hits his strides, you know, Dino Aaron, Aaron Rodgers the- already has that one on the wall now. You know, uh-huh. you're, you're, you're getting the rant next time he's on a podcast. Well, wait till <laughs> we do the AFC. He's, wait till we do the AFC. He's, he's yeah, added you to his list right, ne- right, right, list right next to Anthony Fauci. Oh, I, I'm just waiting for the AFC East preview. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's going to be a very, it's going to be a very manageable start to the season. They're going to coast their way in, and you know, looking through the schedule, twelve and five, thirteen and four. But you know, it's not going to be. You, you wonder how many hits Shanahan could take. You know, it's it's been, it's been a lot of brutal losses. You know, let's let's face it, they were lucky to get past Detroit in the in the, in the championship game. But there's only so many times uh, they can go to the well. There's only so many times Shanahan can go to the well. And Ayuk's going to want to get paid. Debo want to get paid. Uh, Bosa will want to get paid. All, and you can't pay everybody. So they're going to have to figure out who they're going to keep, who's who's expendable, to use an Arnie phrase. Um, but uh, the, the one question I have with the Niners is, and, and this was discussed a lot last year, does anyone really have faith that Purdy can be the guy that's going to lead them? You know, he doesn't have a rocket of an arm. Rode his luck a huge amount last year. You can you can go back and look in so many games last year. Even the even the the championship game against the Lions, where he had the tip pass, came off the helmet that was caught by um, I think it was Ayuk in the end zone. But Purdy, you know, he's not wowed anybody, and and you have to wonder if Shanahan believes that he's the guy. They they kind of, you know, they kind of rode their their way to the championship game. I don't trust in Purdy. I don't believe in Purdy. I think he's he's just one of those manageable quarterbacks that landed on an all-star team and he's the, he's the point guard just, you know, flicking it around. Um but this is a huge season for the for the for the Niners whether who's going to get paid, who's going to walk, is it going to be Shanahan, is Purdy the guy? He, a lot of questions, but at the end of the day, regular season like we saw with the Eagles, they'll coast through the season, but what's going to happen come January? Maybe go around the houses quickly before we wrap up. Starting with you, Kieran, you, you see them winning the division. I take it. Oh yeah, they'll 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 win the division probably by two games, two three games. Brian, I know we'll we'll have the predictions later on in the uh, in in the off season, but do you see the 49ers finishing top dogs? Yeah, I do. Yeah, more so because of the nature of the teams that are in the division. Okay, Ram, we're going to come through now. You know, Rams and Seahawks. Obviously, they bounce back from the Rams and stuff, but I still think. I think there's streets ahead of the other teams in the division with all due respect, even with the question marks that are there. And Shane, finally to you, is it uh, is it not a Niners on top again? I think it's interesting, sorry, just lean on the, on the point that, that Kieran made about Brock Purdy. I mean, this is a, a big test of, of him as to whether he can step up and be a true leader um, because there will be times where that, that quality will, will need to be shown. And that will be the difference between the 49ers being the number one seed in the NFC and being the number four seed. I think they'll win the division. Uh, like Brian alluded to, mainly because of the other guys in the division. But, you know, if they get their act together, they could really push for the, for the top seed. But the problem is, I think, the uh, as we'll probably allude to in the next few weeks, the other teams in the NFC, um, in other divisions, I think have taken a bigger step forward.